What size shoe do you wear? 13. Do yourself a favor, get rid of those. Go buy yourself a pair of 14s. Can I ask why? Just do it and make sure they're 14s. Wear two pairs of socks, stuff newspaper into the toes, whatever you gotta do to make them comfortable. Get some Adidas. Those Nikes aren't gonna do you any favors anytime soon. I'm Sharonda Williams, and welcome to Prime Video Recaps. Welcome to Prime Video Recaps, where I will be recapping some of our favorite Prime Video original titles for you to catch up on before binging a new season. With season two of American Rust, Broken Justice premiering on March 28th, I thought you might need a little reminder of what happened in season one. Based on Philip Meyer's debut novel, American Rust centers around the fictional small town of Beale, Pennsylvania, which is turned upside down when a murder takes place there. Chief of Police Dill Harris is investigating the murder, but when he digs deeper into who is responsible, he is torn between upholding the law or protecting the son of the woman he loves. Episode one opens with Dale Harris crushing up his medication, which are opiates, and weighing them to go with his morning coffee. Grace is at work catching up with her coworkers. Isaac is helping his dad, and Billy is fantasizing about a past experience with Isaac's sister, Lee. Isaac tells his friend Billy that he took some money from his dad so that he can leave the town of Buell. Billy sees a man by the name of Pete Novick who had something to do with his previous arrest. Billy leads Isaac to go into the building to speak with Novick, but Isaac quickly follows behind. Isaac hears muffled sounds inside as if two men are arguing. Dale Harris gets a call from his deputy Steve about a body found at the mill. Dale arrives to investigate and find something. We flash back to six months earlier with Billy and Grace outside of their house, which is being foreclosed on. Grace goes to see Virgil, the husband she is separated from, to confront him about how he is laid up with someone else while their house is being foreclosed on. Virgil goes to the bidding event for the house and brings his gun and his friends to intimidate people from buying it. Isaac jumps into an ice cold lake and nearly drowns until Billy jumps in and saves him. Dale heads to the bar to check in with his pharmacist Jackson, who asks how he is doing on his meds. Jackson is trying to wean Dell off the opiates. Dell brings a bottle of champagne to Grace's place. Dell and Grace get cozy as they celebrate her getting her house back. Billy calls Isaac's sister Lee to tell her about Isaac jumping into the lake earlier that day. Billy gets into a fight with a guy outside the bar. Dell gets a call from his deputy Steve who says he needs to come to the bar. Dell arrives on the scene to find Billy on the ground with his hands tied and Pete Novick standing on his back. Steve shows Dell the video of the altercation between Billy and the guy from the bar. Dell fires Novick on the spot. Lee calls to check in on Isaac. Grace arrives at the police station asking questions about where her son is and whether it was Dell who arrested him. Dell goes to speak to a judge by the name of Glenn who is presiding over Billy's hearing to convince him to show some leniency. Billy is sentenced to six months probation. Virgil and Grace are at the house celebrating, avoiding foreclosure when Dell shows up. Things get quickly awkward and Dell leaves. We go forward in time to six months later where Dell is at the mill. He goes inside and sees Billy's jacket near Pete Novick's dead body. Dell steals a pill from the crime scene and hides Billy's jacket so the officers won't see it. Steve and Frank show up to the scene to investigate. In episode two, Lee returns to Buell after Isaac disappears. Dell takes the pill he found at the crime scene and places it inside his desk at the station. Lee finds her family home in disarray. District Attorney Sue Hurlitz speaks with Dale and Frank about Pete Novick. She puts Frank in charge of the investigation to ensure there is no conflict of interest. Billy is lurking around the mill. Dale sees Billy and tells him to buy shoes a size bigger and of a different brand. Sue holds a press conference to notify the public about Pete Novick's death. Billy covers up the cuts on his hand. Dale and Grace have an awkward run-in together. The town goes to a wedding for Jimbo and Katie, and Billy sees that Lee is back in town. Dell and Frank investigate the phone booth where the anonymous tip came from about Pete Novick's body. Steve brings Frank and Dell a surveillance photo of Novick walking with a man with long hair. Billy and Lee get close on the dance floor. Isaac appears outside and tells Billy that they need to get their story straight. Billy tells Isaac that he needs to get himself together and leave town and to call his sister. Billy helps Lee and her dad get home. Lee asks Billy why he didn't take the scholarship to go to college and he says he didn't want to leave his mom. Lee and Billy share a kiss. Isaac returns to his house with the money he stole and sees Billy and Lee getting intimate. Grace and Dale seem to patch things up. Lee calls Isaac. 
He tells her not to call again and he throws his phone in the river. Billy burns his clothes and shoes from the day Novick was murdered as Isaac prepares to leave town. In episode three, an autopsy is performed on Novick's body and his death is ruled a homicide. Isaac jumps into a moving train. Sue meets with Frank and Dale at the coroner's office and they are told that Novick's skull was hit with a metal object. They also learn Novick was on coke, oxy, and fentanyl. Lee tells Billy that she thinks Isaac saw them together the night before and that Billy needs to stay away from her. Dale returns some of Pete's things to his wife, Pam. Dale goes to see his pharmacist, Jackson, and asks about the pill he found near Novick's body. He tells him it's high-grade fentanyl and is so hard to come by, even he can't prescribe it. Dale and Frank question a man by the name of Carl about the man in the photo with Novick. Carl says the man's name is Bobby and he frequents a club called Buster's. Frank and Steve track Bobby down, but he runs and gets away. Bobby shaves his beard so he can no longer match the photo description. Pete Novick's funeral takes place, which is turned into a PR stunt orchestrated by Sue, who is running for re-election. Billy has an interview with his probation officer and gets a clean slate. Dale tells Grace about a messed up case back in Pittsburgh when he was on the force there, about an eight-year-old abused by his teacher. The kid got scared during the trial and the teacher went free. Dell's colleagues took justice into their own hands and killed the teacher. He left the force before his colleagues could make him repay the debt. Bobby calls the police station and he says he saw a kid get into an argument with Pete and the kid punched them both. He tells them that the kid was Billy Poe and hangs up. Lee runs to Billy's place and they sleep together again. In episode four, Isaac meets a person by the name of Jojo who gives some good tips on surviving on his own. Billy is helping Lee's dad, Harry, who is sick until she can hire a caretaker. Grace and Bethany are trying to start a union at work, but need more votes. They hold a meeting and are able to get more people to sign up. The police arrive at Grace's house with a search warrant. Dell arrives on the scene and Frank tells him Sue has removed Dell from the case. He tells Dell about the anonymous phone tip they received at the station. Virgil goes to see Dell to figure out why the police has searched Billy's room. Dell tells Virgil they're building a case against Billy to place him at the scene of Novick's murder. Frank tries to tell Sue to turn down the heat on the investigation until they can get more evidence, but she says no. Billy tells Lee what happened that night with Novick. Billy confronted Novick and punched both him and Bobby, but it was Isaac who hit Novick in the head and killed him. Lee gets upset and tells him to leave her alone. Frank calls Dell and tells him to bring Billy into the station to be placed under arrest before the end of the day. Episode 5 opens with Steve and Dell finding Carl with some other addicts. Dell asks Carl why he left town and tipped Bobby off. The officers threaten to arrest him, but Carl offers to give them a lead on Bobby. Steve asks Dell why he is still working on the Novick case when Sue kicked him off of it. Dell tells Steve about the anonymous tip and how he has to find Bobby in 10 hours before he has to arrest Billy. Steve says he will help him get to the bottom of it. Lee talks to her husband, Alejandro, and tells him that she is going to be gone from home a little longer and that she is thinking about withdrawing from law school. Grace and her representative, Stephanie, from the Labor Relations Board, along with Bethany, hand in their unionization cards. Her employer threatens to shut the entire business down or move. Dell goes to see the judge to find out what charges Sue is bringing against Billy. He tells the judge to drop the charges. Lee goes to speak with the lawyer about Billy and Isaac, but the lawyer says she can only represent one of them. Virgil picks up Billy and he says he is taking him to Canada until everything blows over. Billy tells him to turn the car around because he isn't fleeing town. They get into an argument and Virgil kicks him out of his truck. Dell is called to the hospital to look into a couple who almost overdosed on coke and fentanyl. He questions the wife of the couple who almost overdosed and her description of the man who sold her the drugs matches Dell's picture of Bobby next to Novick. She gives him information on where they bought the drugs, but by the time Steve and Dell arrive, the drug dealer isn't there. Dell goes to Henry's place to find Billy and sees the box of fentanyl. He asks Henry where he gets it from and Henry says it's from Jackson, who runs the town pharmacy, the same person weaning Dell off his meds. Lee sees Billy jogging down the road and she offers him a ride. When Billy arrives home, Dell and Grace are waiting for him to get arrested. Dell allows him time to say his goodbyes and get cleaned up. When Lee gets home, her husband Alejandro is waiting for her. Dell explains the arrest process to Billy as they head to the police station. Dell books Billy, Grace gets into a car accident, and Jojo leaves Isaac at the diner. When Dell gets home, he is greeted by an unwanted guest named Chuck. He says it's time to collect on his debt. Episode 6 starts with Dell in the car with Chuck, who is driving a little recklessly. Chuck updates Dell on his life and impending divorce. He says he wants Dell to help him handle someone who got away with a crime. 
He has now turned up back in Pittsburgh after eight years. Isaac, now on his own on the road, finds himself in an uncomfortable situation. Chuck takes Dell to a diner where the guy thereafter is working. He tells Dell how exactly he could take care of the man thereafter and where to find him. Chuck leaves a gun for Dell under the table and goes back to the car. Isaac is attacked outside of a hotel. Dell tells Chuck he can't do it and Chuck hits Dell in the face, then shoots the man and himself. Dell leaves the scene. Billy has an arraignment and pleads not guilty. His bail is denied. Grace catches a ride with Lee and Alejandro and uses the opportunity to hint to Alejandro about Lee's relationship with Billy. Alejandro accuses Lee of sleeping with Billy and leaves. Billy is sent to prison and Dell shows up at Grace's house. The episode ends with Grace's car exploding outside of her house. Episode 7 opens with Steve questioning Grace about who will want to firebomb her car. Dell tells Grace about what happened with Chuck. Bobby is still in hiding, but that isn't stopping him from selling drugs. Grace goes to work where her boss has paid someone to talk everyone out of starting a union. Dell is continuing his search to find out who is dealing in the town. Billy refuses to meet with his lawyer. Dell breaks into Jackson's pharmacy store. He finds a list of prescriptions Jackson has been filling for fentanyl. Dell takes the list to Steve and they try to find the addresses of everyone on the list. Meanwhile, we see a local high school football player, Trent, buying drugs and taking them to a party where he passes out. Dell and Steve arrive on the scene and work on Trent until the paramedics arrive, but he doesn't make it. Dell and Steve research the addresses from the fentanyl list at the hospice care facility and discover that most of the people on it are dead. Steve doesn't agree with Dell's motive for continuing to work on the case, but still agrees to help him. Lee goes to the DA's office to get some paralegal work done, but really is to work with Billy's lawyer so she can help with the case. Billy is forced into an underground ring fight in prison. Episode 8 begins with Grace trying to rally the troops to vote yes to unionize. Steve and Dell have a disagreement about the murder case. Isaac is given shelter by a new friend. Billy is ordered to take someone's life in prison. Grace goes to see Billy and asks him to speak with his attorney, Rachel. Dell goes to see Frank to get information about the dealer he arrested. Billy gets into another fight and is placed in solitary confinement. His lawyer, Rachel, arrives with Lee. Billy refuses to talk to Rachel and asks her not to represent him anymore. Grace and Bethany lose the vote to unionize. Dell puts a tracker on Jackson's car. And Dell also gives Jackson the rest of his pills and says he is quitting cold turkey. Isaac reads on the internet about Billy and learns that he is now in jail. Grace sets her house on fire. Jackson meets with Bobby and tells him that Dell is getting close to figuring out the truth. Bobby tells Jackson that he will take care of it. Grace asks Dell to do something he might not be able to come back from. The finale of season one opens with Bobby going on a walk with one of his buyers, who he ends up killing and burying. Billy is told that he is going to have to go back to Jim Pop soon. Dell asks Jackson to get a drink with him. They're drinking at the bar when Dell gets a call from Steve and leaves. Dell heads to find Bobby who tries to murder him. Dell shoots Bobby and then Jackson comes in to kill Dell as well, but Dell shoots him first. Dell stages the crime scene but doesn't account for the woman who appears with the shotgun. She shoots Dell, who shoots her back and kills her. Dell again stages the crime scene, takes a bullet fragment, calls 911, and leaves. Dell disposes of his supplies and goes home for Grace to take care of him. Billy is put back in Jim Pop and asks the guards to deliver a message to Lee. News is broken about the triple homicide that took place. Frank tells Sue about the homicide and Jackson's involvement in the drug ring with Bobby and how they killed each other. Sue isn't happy about the news and Frank is upset as well. Virgil is waiting for Dell in his office and shows him the bag he found in the shed outside of his burnt down house. Virgil knows Grace is the person who burned the house down. Detectives Muss and Fisher come to speak with Dell about his former partner Chuck. Before Billy can be released from prison, he is beaten badly upon his return to Jim Pop and is now in a coma. Lee returns home and finds empty fentanyl wrappers on the table and her father Henry outside dead. Isaac comes back to Buell and heads to the police station to give Dell the murder weapon. Dell tells Isaac to put it back in his pocket and never show it to anybody as he is going to keep his secret and give Isaac the chance for a new lease on life. And there you have it, everything you need to know about American Rust Season 1 before heading into Season 2. Thank you for watching this American Rust edition of Prime Video Recaps. Don't forget, American Rust Broken Justice is now streaming on Prime Video. Mm -hmm.